Normally, I would be sitting at the keyboard to play our prelude, you know that. Um, but because this is the beginning of a month of creativity, both in our worship services and general reflection here at Calgary Unitarians, we're going to do something creative with our prelude this morning, which is you're all going to help us to make it happen. So my friend Christian, thank you Christian, is going to help us uh, with this. We're going to divide the room, as we often do for rounds, into group one, and here's a group, and here's a group, and here's a group. And for the folks on Zoom, you're going to hear Christian singing, and you'll hear me singing, and you're welcome to sing with whatever part makes most sense for you. We're all going to start, however, by clapping. Doom, 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 doom. Join in. Doom, 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 doom. Oh, yes. Well, we're going to do this every Sunday now. This is awesome. Doom, doom. doom. Whatever range works for you. Doom, doom, doom. That sounds great for you. Doom, 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 doom. Doom, 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 doom. Keep going. Said what? Take a listen to what you're doing. change your part. Ready? Now you sing. Sing with them. Sing with them. Doom ticket doom 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 and you doom ticket doom 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 singing with my friends singing with my friends singing with my friends right singing with my friends singing with my friends you get one word yeah. 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 I like. I like. I like. You forgot your part already. I like singing with my friends. 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 Doom ticket, doom, doom, doom. Bass part. Doom ticket, doom, doom, doom. Doom ticket, doom, doom. Bass part. Doom ticket, doom, doom, doom. Doom ticket, doom, doom. Bass part. Doom ticket, doom, doom, doom. Right. Doom ticket, doom, doom. Two more. Doom ticket, doom, doom. Last one. Doom ticket, doom, doom, doom. That was really fancy. Fantastic. Just take it off the thing. 
and we'd like you to stand in front of the cloth. So stand over here. There you go. Good morning, everyone. Uh, let's see. Good morning. Good morning. Turn it on. Number 11. <laughs> Green light. There you go. Push the, I pushed there the wrong go. button. Okay. <laughs> I don't get this end of the microphone very often. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to the physical and virtual home of the Unita Calgary Unitarians. Whoever you are, whomever you love, wherever you are in your journey of faith or search for meaning, welcome. If you're visiting for the first time or the first time in a long time, or you've never heard this part of the announcement before, we know that we are grateful to have you with us. We know that we are good. Okay. We, we come together in beloved community to grow in wisdom, welcome and deepen relationships, and act for a just and sustainable world. We start, as always, by acknowledging the land we are on and the peoples for whom there is a traditional territory, the people of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Siksika, uh, Pikani, the Kanai, and First, First Nations, as well as the Tsutsina, and First Nation, Stony Nakoda, comprised of the Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nations. Okay. Mokinsis, and the Blackfoot word for what is now known as the city of Calgary, is also known to Métis region of Alberta, region three. It says here 111, but I'm pretty sure it's three. <laughs> in, off in offering a land acknowledgement, we honor those who have long been her stewards and accept our shared responsibility for being good caretakers. We, of the Treaty 7 region of southern Alberta, signed September 22, 1877, acknowledge that treaties were signed into who as a, we, as a collaboration between settlers and indigenous peoples using, uh, making us all treaty people. And next week, Jeff will be doing the, um, the welcome, so there will be a test, you know that. <laughs> My name is Jim Washbrook, and I use the pronouns he and him. <laughs> Had to think about that for a minute. And I have the privilege of serving on your board of trustees. This congregation is special to me because here I can explore my own spiritual path, path supported by others, together with people whose values I share, my, uh, my life becomes meaningful. Please join us after the service for coffee, conversation in Wickenden Hall, uh, here in the building, for those in line, online in the virtual coffee room by following the link provided in the chat and on the email service and as always on the webpage. One announcement, you're probably aware that things don't just end at 11.30. We have an AGM at 12.15. Please plan to attend. We need to make a quorum to pass our 2020 budget. There will be a special announcement. There will be also be a special announcement at the AGM. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> My neighbor said something. Oh, are you guys going to get an announcement today? Not that I know anything about. So I guess I'll stick around for the uh, meeting as well. Thank you very much. Yay, Jim. Good morning, everyone. Hello, Zoom 2. I'm Reverend Shelley Thompson. My pronouns are she and her, and I am so happy to be the interim minister here at Calgary Unitarians. It is a wonderful time to be here. It's very exciting. We do definitely want you to stick around for the annual general meeting. It's, uh, first and foremost, it is just such an example of exactly how an AGM should be done. Respecting congregational polity, where you all get to vote on your budget and on your elected positions, and this congregation does it so smooth, it's so sleek, it just doesn't go on for five hours like some of them do. It's excellent, so you want to pay attention to how it's done in case you ever go to another church and you have to teach them, right? And again, very special announcement happening at that meeting. You don't want to miss that, and lunch is here, so please stick around, hang out with us, and everybody's welcome, whether you're a voting member or not. We love to have you here. and serving or sharing community with us. It's going to be a good one. 
And let's see, next week we're having a Mother's Day tea after worship, and we're going to do one of those really wonderful worships where first we tell a story with the children, and then we're going to send them on out to start activities, and then we're going to finish up our little portion of worship for Mother's Day, and then we're going to go join those kids and have a beautiful Mother's Day tea, thanks to Sheila, who's a brilliant decorator and pulls these things off magnificently. And if you have not seen our beautiful teacups, oh, you're in for a treat. So you may, of course, bring mom, bring grandma, bring the special people in your life to the Mother's Day tea. And Jane tells me there's a fabulous Renaissance Singers concert tonight at 7 p.m. What's that? St. Stephen's Anglican Church starts at 6.30 is the pre- Marcia doing her pre-concert talk. She is brilliant on this stuff, people. She's an expert. So you want to learn stuff about Renaissance music. Come listen to Marcia. You'll come away smarter. And then they get, you get to listen to the fabulous concert. So that's an exciting opportunity today. Today for worship, we are focusing on the worship arts. Worship itself is a communal spiritual practice. And there will be elements that are familiar to you and some that we don't use as often. But the invitation is to be as fully present as you're able and receive the sacred gifts that come from participating fully in this beloved religious community. We light our chalice today with the words of Reverend Lynn Cox. I had the privilege of spending a week in seminar with Lynn recently and she's extraordinary. Creative spirit, source of life and love, we give thanks for the beauty of this day and for the company of those assembled here. Thank you for the breezes of change, clearing our heads and bringing fresh ideas. May they cleanse our minds of the oppressions and isms that divide us. Thank you for the flame of hope, the heat of righteous anger, the warmth of compassion and the fire of commitment. May they bubble the cauldrons of transformation. Thank you for oceans of love, rivers of connection, tears of relief and pools of serenity. May healing waters flow over us and through us and among us, wearing down the sharp rocks of despair to bring joy in the morning. Thank you for the good earth beneath us, around us and within us, May we take this clay and co-create a new realm of justice and beauty. Thank you for all these and more. We accept our gifts and commit to building, sculpting, painting, singing and dancing them to life, to abundant life. So be it, blessed be. And now let's go back one step and take this opportunity to say hello to one another. There's such love and connection in this community. If you're able to rise and body your spirit and greet your neighbors and say hi to everybody on Zoom. <laughs> hi Zoom, we love you. Good morning everybody. Oh, yeah. Let's remain standing if you're already standing. If not, let's rise again as we're able. We're going to sing the oneness of everything. Far beyond the grasp of hands, 
for light to meet the eye past the reaches of the mind. There find the key to nature's harmony in an architecture so entwined. Like the birds whose patterns grace the sky and carry all who join in love expanding. The message of peace will rise in flight, taking the weight of the world upon its wings. In the oneness of everything, peace is in the dance of trees who stir before the first breath of wind is yet perceived. Trust in the song becoming one with the dance, and all mysteries can be believed. Songs of life long past that touch our own are written in the earth ever giving. And now to maintain the harmony gives to us all lives worth living for the oneness of find a truth that we might understand and reduce to terms defined. Vast and immeasurable time and space also overwhelmingly designed. Oh, Passing years just might I know the faith that turns in the heart to be reborn in spring, to hear and to feel the pulse of life enters my soul as a song to sing. The oneness of everything. That was a lovely, lovely song. Thank you, Christian and Jane. I love that. Makes me feel more connected to everything and nature. And uh, I'm Sheila McMaster, Director of Religious Education here at the Calgary Unitarians. It's so nice to see everyone this morning. And uh, today we're talking about creativity, which is one of my favorite subjects. I love being creative. And um, one thing, talking about creativity, is many of you know Mary Jean, Mary Ann Louise Kovar. Mary Ann Louise Kovar. And she knitted this. Yes. I volunteered to be the model today. <laughs> And it is going for auction uh, this fall to support the U Jamma Grammas um, in the Stephen Lewis Foundation silent auction. So I want you all to be like, mm, we need to bid on this. That's right. It's very fashionable. And uh, I wanted to shout out to Mariana Louise Kovar. I can say her name if I say it all at once. Mariana Louise Kovar. Um, <laughs> she's over there. <laughs> Wave your hand, Mariana Louise. But she's so talented, so talented with the yarn arts and so talented with the paper arts as well, if any of you've had the privilege to receive one of her cards. So I just want to 
say, I feel blessed to be in the congregation with someone so talented. Thank you, Mary Ann Louise. Woo. And some of you might be feeling like, well, how can I get in touch with my creativity? You might be feeling inspired. Well, good, because now I have a book for you. And it is called The Anywhere Artist by Nikki Slade Robinson. Here we go. I am an anywhere artist. I don't need paint or paper. I can make art anywhere. And my imagination is all that I need. I am a forest artist. I find fluffy lichen and twisted sticks and smooth stones, and I pick up lacy leaf skeletons. I can make anything I want. I am a beach artist, and I collect salty shells, and I shape sand, and I spread curly seaweed out and I use driftwood, making it stand tall to cast long-fingered shadows over my art. I am a rain artist, and my feet dance ringlet patterns in the puddles, and I squish oozy mud into silly shapes. And I am a sky artist, and I lie on the grass and make art inside my head. And the clouds are my paints, and my imagination is my brush. And sometimes my art fills the entire sky. I can make art anywhere, and I can make art with anything. I bet you can too. So what will you make today? The end. And so art is one of my favorite things. And many of you know my partner, Arno. He comes sometimes. He's very tall and looming and often helps put away chairs. And uh, he is an artist. And so when we go to the zoo, uh, he will sit and draw pictures and faces on leaves. He will, no banana is safe in our house. He will draw on all our bananas. <laughs> And one thing we like to do together is we'll go for drives in the country and we'll collect, we'll walk along a country road and I will take pictures and we'll collect cans off the road uh, to help clean it up so it's kind of a mixed, fun, creative date. And uh, next slide, please. I'll show you a picture that I took. This is just outside of Airdrie. So I take the photos and then, next slide, please. He paints them. And so I even had Mitch and A.V. say, it's the same photo. And I'm like, no, no, that's, <laughs> that's finger painted. So Arno doesn't use brushes. He just uses his fingers and to create the art. And so it's something that we like to collaborate together and have a lot of fun with. And uh, another one is we go for a weekly date at the spa. So it's very nice. We go to a, a sauna, and then we come out. And I was sitting there, and there's this plant that looks exactly like a mandrake root from Harry Potter. And so, next slide, please. <clears throat> he could not resist. <laughs> we took a picture and then he drew on the picture. And so that's, that's another thing, kind of anywhere art that we like to do. It's very fun. Um, and so this week's challenge for all of you is I would like to ask you to lean into your own creativity. Perhaps there's something that you used to love to do and that you can pick up again, or, you know, if you're sitting somewhere and you look over and you see something that looks like a mandrake root, don't be afraid, take a picture, draw on it a little bit, you know, have some fun. Um, with the children and youth today, we're going to be heading outside to the garden where we're going to look for found objects to create our own art today and just have that way of connecting spirituality with nature, with creativity. So I'm very excited about that. And in this week's Children and Youth newsletter, the quote is by Pablo Picasso. And it says, art washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life. And now please join me as we sing the children and youth downstairs.
Beautiful. I love that story. That is a wonderful way, going out in nature and collecting things and taking pictures that inspire you. If you want to create a home altar, that's a way to be creative. And you can bring pine cones or leaves or treasures that you find out in nature and make a sacred space for them to honor the earth and a place for reflection and meditation for yourself where you can also put a candle or a chalice and to have that as a centering place for yourself to know that there's sanctuary to be found in nature and we can even recreate that space for ourselves indoors so that it's with us always, even in the winter time. We're going to begin our time of spiritual practice with a centering practice of singing bowl and uh, then there'll be some silence as that continues to ring. And uh, these practices are, are an opportunity to be as comfortable as you can and breathe deeply. You might want to close your eyes and relax. And we're settling into this time of shared presence. It is truly made sacred by your presence together. As a faith community, we hold one another lovingly with kindness and compassion through all of life's beautiful joys, celebrations, and all its pain and difficulty. We light candles and place stones in water as rituals for sharing life's journey. The candles represent many things the light of love, the spirit of oneness, the flames of hope, courage, comfort and peace, remembrance and gratitude. Our bowl of water is a symbol of community, connection and care, of holding. 
The pebbles can represent those heavy worries and sorrows that we don't want to carry alone. Together, we make each other's burdens lighter and remind one another that no one is alone. We light candles of joy for ourselves and for our loved ones to honor the celebrations, the milestones, the good news that is so much sweeter when shared. We light candles of concern for all that is causing anxiety, fear, or pain, all the things that are too heavy to bear alone. And we light a global candle because we know that we share the journey toward collective liberation with all beings everywhere. And we light a special candle for peace. May it prevail everywhere on earth. We bear witness to one another with respect for each person's worth and dignity. And while we communally light our candles and place our stones, we sing. When we sing together, we're breathing together and our hearts and brains follow the rhythms and entrain with one another. It's an ancient practice of meditating together that gives us the embodied experience of being connected and creating something that is more than the sum of its parts. For our singing meditations, we choose mantras or prayers that are repeated, allowing the experience to deepen. You may now come forward to light your candles and place your stones as we sing Spirit of Life. the stirrings of compassion blow in the wind rise in the sea move in the hand giving life the shape of justice move toward a Set me. 
spirit of life, we ask that you fill every heart with loving kindness and bless every mind with peace. We bless this sacred sharing with this prayer from Reverend Marcus Liefert. Blessed are the makers. O oh, you who are makers, makers of beauty, of paintings and pottery and sculpture, blessed is the making. You who make with hands and hearts and minds, who make out of breath and bones and blood human lives, blessed are the makers. Blessed are those who make us laugh, who make jokes and faces and toys. Blessed are those who make messes, who make trouble and friends, and when needed, make up. Blessed are those who make do, who make it last, make it work, make beds and make time for others. Blessed are those who make love, who make out and make more and make mistakes. Blessed are those who make coffee and tea, who make conversation, who make meaning in the face of tragedy, who make merriment and awaken joy. Blessed are those who make peace, for they shall inherit the earth. Amen. Of course, spiritual practice can not only be found in worship, Oh, hello. Are we back? We're back. <laughs> Many of you know that we have theme-based listening circles here at Calgary Unitarians, and I want to make a plug for small group ministry. And there are a lot of people here who've participated in it, and I see Ev Dewar. I'm looking at Ev. She runs a group on the fourth Sunday of the month. And we use Soul Matters theme-based ministry and what happens in a covenant circle or a theme-based listening circle is that you get the opportunity to really go deep and practice your deep, authentic presence and listening to one another as you reflect and ponder and seek meaning and purpose and all that is mysterious about human life by reflecting on, a, on the same topic and there are spiritual exercises given in the packet. They give you four or five options to try for the month. Try them on and see which one works for you. And then you bring those experiences to your group and you share them. And you take turns and you really listen. And then after each person has shared, you have an opportunity to reflect on how these experiences all fit together and give us a deeper knowledge and wisdom and understanding of what it means to be human. Because together we're so much more than any one of us alone. It's a place to make dear lifelong friends and a place to really explore your Unitarian Universalist faith and your own spirituality. I strongly suggest small group ministry to anyone who has that opportunity of time and spaciousness in your life. We know that everyone doesn't. But if you do, it's a wonderful practice and something you'll never regret. And in, in fact, you'll all be preaching it. Once you've done it, you'll be preaching it to everyone you know. So we have our, our monthly packet this month on creativity. There are some printed versions out in the lobby. I prepared a table for us today to, to share resources with you about all sorts of spiritual practices and their soul matters out there. And it's available in our e-news link as well because it's a long packet of inspiration, motivation, songs, poems, readings, books, TED Talks, you name it, they're in there to help us explore. And you just pick and choose. It's like a buffet. You pick and choose the things that are interesting to you, that call to you. And you find questions that resonate for you, for you to ponder. And there is a very special Soul Matters program called Soulful Home for our families. And anyone who's wanting to practice intentional UU parenting, because we know our families are incredibly busy and parents would be lucky to have time to take a shower, let alone go to a small group ministry meeting. 
So the, small, the Soulful Home Packet is very accessible to families because it talks about when you're eating dinner, when you're in the car with your kids, when you're doing the routine of daily living, how can you just slip in there, a little Unitarian Universalist parenting, a little faith, a little child sliding, a question, a story, and it gives loads of examples so even busy parents on the go can have those deeper conversations and share their faith with their children. So we have a copy of uh, an example of Soulful Home out there, and I was excited to find out that they actually have two really good packets about helping your kids stay busy and do really cool activities and fun things that aren't on their screens over the summer. So I think they're fun things for all of us. Frankly, I'd be happy to do any one of those activities. So um, there, that information is available as well. So that's another form of communal practice that can really enrich our lives and help us get in the habit of doing this on our own as well. And if you have questions, you can certainly talk to Ev or any number of the wonderful people here who will preach the beauty of small group ministry to you and help you know that you too are invited to join one of these circles and receive the magic and blessing and transformation that is this kind of deeper soul sharing ministry. When it comes to personal spiritual practices, I really mean it when I say there is a spiritual practice for every one. The intentions we set, the attention we pay to what we're doing, the process of undertaking something as a spiritual practice, and the discipline of doing it every day or on a regular basis, it's what elevates these experiences into the realms of healing, growth, self-discovery, and meaning-making. These are practices aimed at putting us into contact with the numinous within each of us and perhaps beyond. The best way to understand the power of these practices is what we use call the direct experience of transcendent mystery and wonder. In other words, try it for yourself. Find out which spiritual practices resonate for you and which ones are meaningful for what's up in your life right now. And then there's the beauty of as you change and grow and new things happen in your life, there are additional practices. So over time, you may find that there are many practices that work for you, depending on what's going on and what your needs are, to relate and to call upon the deep, deep resources of wisdom and insight and inspiration that are in each and every one of you. And in the world, all around us, the abundance and the potential that exists, all we have to do is ask, and we practice and we receive it. So you are invited to explore and experiment with this wide variety, to find things that speak to you, and one of the best things is you're free to make it your own, whatever it is. Be creative, use your imagination, give yourself permission to go deeper and really explore your spirituality and your Unitarian Universalist faith. I love the story of the Anywhere artist because I'm one of those. I, you, know, you've, I, you may remember I brought home a tree limb and turned it into a work of art one time. I, you know, I make stuff out in nature. I love to go out in nature and make little fairy houses or draw on the beach or, or what have you. So uh, I'm definitely one of those. And then I love meditation and expressive arts therapy from my days as a therapist. There are so many ways to access healing and the wisdom of the body through art because it circumvents that left side of our brain and gives us access to something we don't normally pay attention to in ourselves. So once you find something that works for you, the discipline to do it on a regular basis is what will make it work in your life. Because as we do this over and over and over again, it's like the turning of the spiral or the twists and turns of a labyrinth. It helps us go deeper and it helps us find that place within ourselves where that abundance resides. There really truly are an endless number of spiritual practices. So how in the world do you find out about them? 
One of my very favorite resources is a book. It's a UU book, and it's called Everyday Spiritual Practice. And we have a copy in our library. I couldn't lay my hands on it today. I brought my copy for you to look at. And I've got a resource sheet that's got the information about the book and a picture of it, so you know what you're looking for. It gives a lot of examples, and each example is provided by a different um, UU minister or religious professional or some of our more dedicated practitioners who are our, our members and friends. And the many pathways are put into categories. Engaging with the mind through contemplation. Engaging the body through activity and nourishment. Engaging the heart through relationship. Engaging the will through right action. And engaging the soul through creativity. The book's editor, Reverend Scott Alexander, says, we can practice spirituality in our daily lives, in our daily activities, by remembering to pause, pay attention, and feel appreciation for what is before us. Paying attention means using all of our senses in being in the world and in the moment. So even for busy people, if you are choosing uh, vegetarianism, or you'd like to try veganism, the simple act of having a meal that is very deliberately chosen to nourish your body and help protect the earth and preserve life on this planet, that is a spiritual practice. For some people, it's walking the dog. There's a meditation. It's a walking meditation, enjoying nature, breathing, getting outside of your head and, and really being at one with nature. So there's something that everyone can incorporate into their daily life. For some people who are not me, uh, this can even be doing the dishes as a meditative practice. House cleaning is very calming to some people. So there's something for everyone. And another resource I'm sharing with you is from the Center for Contemplative Mind in Society, which sadly has uh, shut its doors and is uh, maintaining its resources online for the time being. But they have an absolutely fantastic tool called the Tree of Contemplative Practices. And they categorize it similarly to the ways in the book. Uh, it, it includes more traditional examples, things like Tonglen, things like yoga from the world's religions and other traditions. And then it also includes the modern practices like, you know, as you've heard me say so many times, all of our social justice work is spiritual practice and faith formation work. So that's included in there as well. And they provide a blank tree then for you to start cataloging your own experiences and making a record for yourself of the things that are enlivening and nurturing for you, for your own tree of life. And there's an explanation. What are all of these practices? And there's a website included as well called Spirituality and Practice that has information about all of these things in addition to the usual wonderful blogs and articles and videos and wonderful, wonderful things on that website. So many good resources for us. And there are two more practices that I want to highlight and invite you to take home with you. An expressive art mandala making activity. This is truly great for all ages and finger labyrinths. So I have handouts, instructions, and examples, all of that waiting for you in the lobby. Here's something about me. I love the expressive arts. I'm with Sheila. I'm an artist. I'm an expressor. And as a therapist doing uh, expressive arts therapy, I learned so much about how different media and different ways of accessing and communicating with the wholeness of our being, not just the left side of the brain, really uh, is so profound and meaningful and often surprising. I've heard messages and received wisdom from my body that my analytical mind is like, really? Are you sure? You? Me? Hmm. Okay, then. And sometimes it's just a matter of being at peace with that message, even when we don't necessarily have an interpretation or know what it means. We just know that it's authentic for us. So, Art making of any kind can be used as a spiritual practice. The people who knit know this. It's a spiritual practice, isn't it, Marianne Louise? 
Mandalas have a long history in many cultures all around the world, and they are linked to the lineages of the stone circles and the medicine wheels that we see back in Neolithic times all over the world. And here in, on Turtle Island, we know there are many, many traditions. We learned about one from Elder Pablo recently of using the medicine wheels as a map for human psychology, for our lifespan, for the seasons and the different seasons of our lives, for meaning making as beings who are a part of the interdependent web of all creation. And some, for some, like the Tibetan Buddhists, their mandalas are maps of the realm of Buddha, maps of the universe. So there are many ways in which these traditions have been used around the world. Many people have discovered their power. So this form of mandala making is a very fascinating tool to learn about yourself in a holistic, embodied, nonverbal way. And really, you simply start with that intention. There, you just give yourself a circle, and we've got some. And colors, a medium, finger paint, watercolor, colored pencil, crayon, whatever it may be. And you allow yourself to fill that circle with shapes and symbols and free expressed patterns and designs. You don't have to do the sacred geometry. You can do anything you want in there. There's some really beautiful examples back there. And you allow that time to be meditative and reflective and be what it is and enjoy it. And then it may or may not yield to interpretation. You may look at it and realize, oh, wow. Wow, yeah, that matches my dream from the other day. Or yeah, that, that's the feeling I'm having. It's that color right there. Or that shape represents the knot that's in my stomach. So it can be very um, healing and a good way to get in touch with yourself. And the lived experience really has a way of working on you from the inside out. So you might have a regular practice of doing a small mandala every day and then journaling about it. That's one way. So I've shared a guide with you from author Elizabeth Lewis, who is actually a grief therapist. And so she uses the mandala experience to help people heal. Because we know that grief is something that words simply cannot express. There really aren't words for what's going on in us when we're grieving. And it's a much deeper, more visceral experience. So art is a very powerful tool for helping us access when we're feeling afraid and uncertain and yet overwhelmed by those emotions. We can use that art practice as a very gentle invitation to be present with our feelings and work with them and live with them and make peace with them as best we possibly can. So I love that practice. And there's a wonderful mandala book I've listed for you and it's mandalas as luminous symbols of healing. There's some examples printed out out there. And I learned that actually at my archetypal psychology course, we use this book. And it's got uh, so much to discover in it. The second spiritual practice is finger labyrinths. Most of you have been in a labyrinth at least once or twice in your life, I hope. But we don't always have easy access to them a big, large, walkable one. There's one in the botanical gardens, and I know there's a lot of them all around Calgary, but we can't always go there, and sometimes it's cold, and we don't want to. So the finger labyrinth is an excellent solution for meditation and contemplation anywhere and everywhere. It can be a tool for in a di inner dialogue around a question or a problem in your life, and it can be a pathway for affirmation and intention setting for ourselves. And once again, that invitation is to be fully present in the body and bring our attention right into the moment. And there is that remarkable abundance of information from our intuition, inner wisdom, and our ability to connect to the source of life, the spark of the divine in each of us. So that's another practice for you to experiment with. You can color the mandala, 
as you do, you go very slowly around the circuits, and then you may want to note, what was my intention? Did, I, did it shift? Did I learn anything new? Do I want to do it again? Or was it simply a lovely, peaceful break from the modern world? So that's out there for you to enjoy. So many ways to practice our spiritual lives together. We're going to be in a, a short amount of time conducting our annual general meeting. And once again, a reminder, as a faith community, an intentional faith community, when we gather to lovingly, responsibly, accountably look at our budget, that's our mission we're talking about. That budget represents the service that we want to do with one another and in the world. That budget is an expression of our commitment and our care and our dedication to participating in wider community with our congregation, with Calgary, and with the wider world. It's very much a spiritual practice of doing the business of church. It's really church work on the one hand, but it's the work of the church on the other hand. So as we approach that meeting, again, everyone here does a wonderful job. It's not boring, I promise. It doesn't go on and on. And it's that opportunity to celebrate and honor this community and all that it means in our lives. So we hope you'll stay with us and experience that as well. Another spiritual discipline that we follow here at Calgary Unitarians is practicing the spiritual value of generosity with one another. We give our time and our talent and our treasure to support this self-sustaining community that gives so much to us all. We're grateful for the financial gifts that make it possible for us to continue our service and the ritual of giving and receiving when we're passing that basket is a time to reflect upon what the community means to us and why you want it to carry on. Our four others this month is the Immigrant Services of Calgary, connecting newcomers to the right service at the right agency every time. Through their work, they ensure families and individuals have the support they need to successfully begin a new chapter of their lives in Canada. They're innovating their work, reimagining and transforming the newcomer experience to make it easier to connect with services and support in the way that's best for their clients. And they work collaboratively with governments, organizations, community members, and all the other agencies to help immigrants and refugees build thriving lives in the Calgary community. I was recently contacted by a woman from Afghanistan who has immigrated here with her four children and has reached out to our own immigration support team for help because her brother would like very much to leave his temporary location in Russia and come to Canada to be with his family. He was a policeman before the Taliban took over and they have been systematically murdering and beheading his colleagues back home. So he is truly terrified that they may find him or that that is all that awaits him if he's not able to get out and come to safety here. So I am so grateful for the work of this congregation with immigrant support and refugee support. It matters so much, and it's near and dear to our hearts. So we also want to support that in the wider community. And thank you all to mail who, who mail checks and make online contributions, and any and every way that you sh support this community. We are truly grateful. Ushers, please come forward to receive the in-person contributions being offered today. sky, promise of hope held high, 
This is our sacred living trust, treasure of life sanctified, called by earth and sky. Precious these waters, endless seas, deep ocean stream, Waters of healing, rivers of rain, the wash of love again. Called by earth and sky, promise of hope held high. This is our sacred living trust, treasure of love sanctified, called by earth and sky. Precious these mountains, ancient sands, past fragile land, seeds of awakening rooted and strong. Creation's faithful song Called by earth and sky Promise of hope held high This is our sacred living trust Treasure of life sanctified Called by earth and sky called by earth and sky when we give we say yes to something we value with these gifts which have been freely given and gratefully received we say yes to the values of our faith may these gifts help us practice Unitarian Universalism within and beyond our church. We dedicate these gifts to the values and the vision we share. Words of Laurel Amabile. You are invited once again to stay with us. And Mitch, uh, are the folks online to stay on the same channel? Is that right? We want everyone to Okay, so there is coffee chat for those of you on Zoom. There's a coffee link in the chat. And there is a coffee time briefly for those of us who are going to stay. And then we begin at what time again, Pam? 12.15? 12.15. So we get our usual coffee time for conversation and socialization. And then we're going to regather and do this wonderful annual meeting that our board and our, especially our treasurer, Carol, and our finance team have worked so hard on. Please stay. And yes, oh my goodness, there's lunch. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. Yes, in case you forgot, there's lunch too. Because who doesn't love a good lunch? It is a spiritual practice eating together. Do you know this? After we, we couldn't do it for so long, we remembered and we realized just eating together and going to a potluck is a spiritual practice. So please stay with us. We look forward to sharing this time together. We extinguish the chalice, but we take the light of warmth and community with us, and we share it wherever we go. We extinguish the chalice with the words of Unitarian minister Theodore Parker. Be ours a religion which, like sunshine, goes everywhere. Its temple, all space. Its shrine, the good heart. Its creed, all truth. Its ritual, works of love, its profession of faith, divine living. Amen and blessed be. And now join us in singing our closing hymn in honor of Harry Belafonte, who passed away recently. He learned the words to this song on a trip to uh, Guinea in Africa from an elder who shared this story of creation and the meaning of life with him, and he made it into this song. Turn the world around. We come from the fire, living in the fire. 
go back to the fire, turn the world around. We come from the water, living in the water. Go back to the water, turn the world around. We come from the mountain, living on the mountain. Go back to the mountain, turn the world around. Whoa, so is life. Ah, so is life. Whoa, so is life. Dum the dum, who I am. Do I know who you are? Do you know another clearly? Do we know who we are? Do you know who I am? Do you know who you are? See we want another clearly. Do we know who we are? Do you know who I am? Do you know who you are? See we want another clearly. Do we know who we are? Whoa, so is life about you are. So is life. Whoa, so is life about you are. So is life. We come to the river, river, watch the mountain fire, make the sunlight turn the world around. Heart is of the river, body is the mountain, spirit is the sunlight, turn the world around. We are of the spirit, truly of the spirit, only can the spirit turn the world around. Whoa, so is life a body, ha, so is life. Whoa, so is life a body, ha, so is life. Whoa, so is life a body, ha, so is life. Whoa. So is life a bati wa